Hello! A new to me company, Golden Maple, reached out to me recently asking if I'd like to try out some of their brushes. They sell all kinds of brushes in watercolour, acrylic and oil. I decided to choose some watercolour brushes, funnily enough, and they've been kind enough to send me out a package with a few different brushes in it. So I'm really curious to see what they've sent me. Let's get into it. So we have three different sets of brushes here, which is really kind of them. I did give them a few suggestions on the brushes that I might be interested in, expecting them to just pick one of them, but no, they sent out more. So yeah, thank you so much to Golden Maple for sending them to me. These were sent out to me for free for review, but I'm not being sponsored, so all of the opinions are my own. And I've looked around online, these look like they are pretty easy to get on Golden Maple's website with a whole bunch of different currencies, and also on Amazon. So I'll be linking them all down below in the description and you could check them out for yourself if you're looking around for some new brushes. Alright, let's check them out one by one. So first up is this package. They are rather long handled brushes. I decided to go for maybe some flat brushes because I have a lot of round ones and barely any flats. I think these are also sable hair brushes so they're natural animal hairs. Yes, vegans look away now because these are not going to be vegan friendly. The reason I went for the sable ones is because they do hold a lot more water and I like using them. I've got a number of other sable brushes and they're always just fabulous to use. Oh, they're nice and shiny. And it looks like we have sizes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12, which is a nice range. So this one's quite large. And then we've got a fairly small little size down here. Sometimes I just really want a flat brush to make nice lines and also just paint out flat washes, things like that. The biggest flat brush I have is this one, which is lovely, but it is massive and sometimes it's just a bit too big. So I think these will be a nice size for painting in my sketchbooks. I'll test all the brushes out soon, but I'll show you the other two things that they sent me as well. Next up, we have this fancy looking box that says paintbrush squirrel hair. And this one is a quill. I've already had a sneaky peek. It's a really pretty one. I like this a lot. You are the artist of your life. Well, there we go. I thought it was a number eight. Actually, no, it is a number four and it says golden maple on it. I really like the wood as well. It looks like a nice brush. It feels pleasant to hold. I'll take off all this plastic casing. There we go. This one I think stays on because you can see how the brush hairs have been tied down here and so I think you keep this plastic bit on. But anyway, this is a very pointy brush. It is full of that glue that they use to stick brush hairs together so I'm going to need to rinse these out in water before I can use them. But it's a nice size. And last up is this cute little case with three travel brushes in it. I love travel brushes, I can't resist them. They're in different sizes, they're all still wrapped in the plastic. They unscrew like that and then screw in. So they've got a really nice mechanism on it. I was playing with it earlier, but this is a number four. Now these ones here are synthetic Taclon brushes, which quite often is the case when it comes to travel brushes, although you can get natural hair brushes too. That's a really nice size actually for a little sketchbook. And we'll see what the other two look like as well. They're beautiful brushes. I love that screw-in mechanism. It's really stable. That's not wobbling anywhere. I've had other brushes where you just pop it in and it shakes about and it's so annoying, but these ones have a really nice tight mechanism there. This one's a number eight, so pretty much double the size of that. And this last one I'm guessing is a 10 or a 12. Let's see. Oh, yep, it's a 12. <laughs> and this is a big chunky boy. So they look really great. I'm liking those a lot already. I just like the aesthetic look of them, the little barrel part here and the nice shiny metal. They have holes in the ends of the lids, which is really great because if you screw the lid back on and the brush isn't dry, at least the rest of the water can ventilate out of it and you don't get so much mold growing. I am probably going to end up taking these to Greece with me. So I'm really excited to have some more travel brushes to add into my art travel kit. Okay, I've pulled them all out of their cases just so that I can take them to the sink and give them a good rinsing. That is really stiff and I need to get all of that 
yucky glue out. Once it comes out, they'll be fine. Well, I've thoroughly rinsed them all out, and these ones are definitely natural animal hair brushes. You can kind of see how the fibers of them are just all over the place, and that's because they hold so much water. Oh my goodness, I had to squeeze them out a little bit, and so I do need to foof them a little bit gently. It's always a good idea to do this when you finish painting. Just make sure that all of the fibers are nice and smooth so that your brushes will last a lot longer. It's also a good idea to make that into a nice quill point every time you've finished because this is actually going to fan out quite a lot when you press it down onto the paper that's what they're designed to do and then you can just taper it back into a nice point like that but they're very wet still a little while ago I found this cheap plastic brush holder thing it's got little notches in it and I can put a little towel in there but I think I might just sit these guys on here Quite a lot of my short handle brushes are not long enough to fit on this, but these ones are going on here perfectly. So I should be storing them here for now until such time as I find a better place for them. And that one can go there too. And then these three are the travel brushes, which seem to be holding quite a decent amount of water as well, although they won't hold as much. So I might do a bit of a comparison so you can actually see how much more water an animal hair brush will hold like a sable here or a squirrel and why I like using them because of that reason. Before I start painting I thought you might like to see a comparison between a cheap synthetic Taclon brush and the golden maple natural hair brush. I'm saturating them as much as possible with some blue paint water and we'll see how much water they hold. So here's the cheap Taclon brush actually doing pretty well all things considered. And now for the golden maple brush it is significantly juicier at the beginning, and I was able to paint a bit further than with the Taclon brush. Though the difference isn't as big because these two brushes are quite small. So I'm going to try with some larger flat brushes, doing the same with this Taclon brush, which is also synthetic. That one ran out really quickly actually, and now I'm loading up the golden maple natural hair brush. You could probably see already just how much water it's holding, and sure enough, that paint goes a lot further. I'm pretty sure these golden maple brushes have a lot more hair fibers in it compared to the Taclon ones there. So that's going to be a bigger surface area for holding more water. And now I'm using my biggest brush here just to see how much it will paint out. Just demonstrating a really flat even wash with it. Who knows what I was talking about there. I sped this footage up because we were here for a long time. Now I'm trying out the squirrel hair brush. You can see that this is really juicy, holds a lot of paint, and because it's very tapered, you can get quite a variety of line widths from rather large flat washes into thinner points. I'm just painting over the top with some different paint so you can see some more of the details. Quite thin lines for such a large brush. And then also some really thick ones if you press down. And I'm just showing you some of the line widths I could get with the travel brushes. Even though these are synthetic, they actually held a decent amount of paint as well. And these are a lot more precise. They have nice sharp points and all three of them were very useful together in their different sizes. The largest will do a relatively decent flat wash and then the smaller sizes are great for tiny details. I generally prefer round brushes because they do have a bit more variety in what you can get with the paint strokes from small lines to a slightly flatter wash. I'm going to do some actual paintings now and I decided to pull out my Roman small palette because it has nice big full pans and it's easy to get the larger brushes into the paint. My first painting I'm using the flat brush set and I think I managed to use all of the different sizes. Some of them more for washing the plain water on and then smaller sizes to drop in color. These Roman small paints are absolutely stunning. The shadowy colors that I have, including that misty morning, are just my favorites. They're so pretty and they split out really well. So the painting I'm going for are mountains in the background and then I have some colorful houses in the foreground. In the reference photo, the houses are all the same color, but I actually ended up changing that and painting them in a rainbow order as we'll see soon but I wanted to paint in the background sky and mountains first. The flat brushes worked really well for this and I was able to use a smaller one to carve around the edges of the roofs which would have been a lot more challenging I think with a round brush. The paper I'm using is 100% cotton so you can see that paint disperse beautifully into it. The bottom part here is a reflection because the houses are against water. 
Not too sure how well I did with the reflection in this, but it was really satisfying watching the paint spread out. That hematite is such a deep colour. I mixed it in with Perylene Green Deep, and those two colours worked beautifully together. So you can see the nice crisp edges I'm able to get with this flat brush. Because they hold so much paint and water as well, it's really easy to get a big wash in the background. But I was also able to do some precision work on these roofs here. Using slightly less paint and water in the brush, I had to keep blotting it on a paper towel because there was just so much water in the fibres. But really I'd rather have more than not enough because you can always take water out but it's impossible to add water in once the brush is completely saturated. I painted alternating houses here so that they could dry before I painted the other houses and not get a big blurry mess when all the paint runs in together. My houses are a bit wobbly. I did still struggle a bit to get the finer details in here, but the little brush helped quite a lot and I was at least able to maintain quite a lot of the straight edges. These lower houses which are in the water I tried to make a little bit blurrier just to try and get an idea that it's reflecting in the water. And this was a pretty fun painting to do. I'm really glad I decided to change the colour scheme and add an individual colour for each house. I'm really happy with how these flat brushes worked together as a set. I mean, in most cases I would have some round brushes and maybe a few other shapes as well. But I really just wanted to showcase this one flat brush set on its own to see if I could do a whole painting. And yes, I was able to. I'm also really happy to report that none of the brushes shed any hairs. They all stayed in the ferrule so they are very well glued in by the looks of things. The brush construction was really great. There were no wobbly ferrules or anything falling off. And I really like the shiny handles. I think they look really pretty as well as actually functioning. I think the best bit was painting in this relatively straight line with a flat brush. Although I did struggle a little bit with control of the amount of paint in it. I got there in the end and I did use a bit of pen to add in some outlines and tidy up some of the imperfections. Yeah, I'm happy with this one. Let me know what you think of the painting in the comments, but here is my second painting of the day using only the quill brush. And in hindsight, I think I could have gone with a slightly bigger piece of paper. This one's pretty small and I realized quickly that this quill brush is meant more for loose paintings rather than what I did, which was a little bit too tight and detailed. That hematite is insanely dark, by the way. I found a little picture of a couple of ducklings and I thought I'd try and paint that. This one's not very successful, I have to say. I don't think I really like the colours that I used and also the duckling on the left wasn't drawn very well and so it looks a bit funny. But crappy artwork aside, the paintbrush itself is really beautiful and incredibly juicy as you can see here. I struggled a lot to control how much water was in it. Like I said, this would have been much better for painting in a large area and just dropping down some really loose brush strokes. I think I need a bit more practice with this one. Oh, I don't know what's going on with the shape of this duckling. It ain't right. It is quite fun to paint with a single brush though, and this quill brush is pretty versatile in that I could get a variety of brush strokes from fairly thin lines here to much broader, flatter washes if I push the brush more firmly against the paper. The squirrel hairs on this brush are incredibly soft. So there is a bit of a learning curve when it comes to painting with the brush. It's better to use a light touch and not push on the paper too heavily, otherwise you will get a really blobby mess. Ah oh dear, I wrecked the beak on that left one right there. The handle on this brush was really tapered and it just felt so nice to hold in my hand as well. So this is a super high quality brush. Once again, none of the hairs fell out and I will definitely be using this brush a lot more in the future. 
I should just mention that with brushes like these, you really do need to store them flat or with the bristles facing downwards when they are drying because otherwise the water will get into that ferrule and dissolve the glue. You don't want to sit the brushes up right when they're wet. I always store my brushes flat and I will let them fully dry on my desk before I put them away in a zipper case just because I really don't want mold to form in those bristles and this really prolongs the longevity of a brush. Finishing this one, yeah, let's move on to the next one, shall we? <laughs> and last up, I'm going to use the three travel brushes which have the Taclon bristles. These are a bit firmer than the natural hair brushes. I'd consider these maybe about a medium firmness. And all things considered, these actually held a decent amount of water. I was quite impressed with them. I've used other Taclon brushes of this size that are totally useless. But these seem to have a decent number of fibers in them and so therefore they hold a lot more water per surface area. And because they are a little firmer it is easier to control them. So if you're starting out with painting something like these brushes is probably actually a good way to begin to give you just a little bit more control and not have quite as much water running out onto the paper. But even so that big brush managed to spread out the paint really well on this. This is about an A5 size. I don't know that I'd want to go much bigger with these travel brushes. You can probably see by the shape that I'm going to paint a crab. I wanted to get the background in first though. I use the larger brush for the background and then I'm using the two smaller brushes for the crabby details. I thoroughly enjoyed all three of these brushes and yet again none of the fibers fell out. Hooray! The part where it screws together stayed nice and firm. I had no wobbly brushes at all. And they feel nice to use in the hand, they're a good length. And once again, those Roman Schmall paints are absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend those. The paints worked extremely well with all of the brushes that I had. And I'm sure any other professional paint will work just as well. Be sure to use cotton watercolour paper too, this does make a difference. And because I had good quality paper along with the paint and the brushes, it just made the whole painting session a real delight because everything works really well and doesn't cause a lot of frustration. Any errors are entirely my own and cannot be blamed on the products. This little crab, I had its little mouth parts and it looks like it has buck teeth. It just makes me laugh every time I see it. I decided to leave it like that because it's just really funny. Overall, I'm really happy with this painting and I think all three of these brushes are incredibly useful. I am definitely going to have to find a little space in my suitcase to take these with me to Greece. I have some natural hair travel brushes as well, but sometimes they do get a bit blobby because they hold a lot more water. So I think these ones will be really great for more precise paintings. And I just adore the little case that they come in. It's so cute. So from my paintings today, I'm really impressed with the quality of the golden maple brushes that they sent to me. Their website looks pretty easy to navigate and the prices of the brushes are fairly reasonable. I mean, natural hair brushes will always cost a bit more, but they do last a long time. And if you spend time doing some brush care, making sure that all of the bristles are nicely tapered when you finished using them and letting them dry flat, these sorts of brushes will last a lifetime, if not longer. So it's worth investing in a few high quality brushes rather than a lot of nasty cheap ones that won't last. And here's my final crabby painting. So here are all the brushes. I managed to use every single one of them and my artworks. I just love the background in this one. Those colors just work so well together and the houses didn't turn out too badly once I added some pen just to get a bit of extra definition on them. Not too sure if the reflections worked but I do like the colors in this. I'm happy with this painting and I've got these little duckies. It was a little difficult just because the brush is quite large and I probably should have done this at twice the size but I was able to still get a relatively decent amount of detail with it. My little crabby, I think he turned out pretty cute. And overall, I'm happy with all of the brushes. I think they're really nice quality. And I'm not just saying that because they sent them to me. They are genuinely good. Thank you very much to Golden Maple for sending me these gorgeous brushes. I love them all. And if you want to check them out, I've got the link down below. I think I've also got a discount code, so I'll be adding that in there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And you might want to click that subscribe button for more videos. You might also want to 
to check out this video I made the frugal crafters brushes and also if you want to check out more on the Roman small palette that I have there here's a video here I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all again really soon in my next video Swatch you later bye